Hello and welcome back to It's Queer Magic. It's me, your host, Kier Bo. It's so good to see you. Welcome to the library. I got a really great question on the last video about ancestor work and I wanted to just talk about this topic because I feel like it's something that we all deal with. It's definitely something that I dealt with and a lot of my peers dealt with and are dealing with uh, when it comes to starting to maybe work magic or work with your ancestors or spirits and it's surrounding a general fear of those encounters right um the we're actually going to be responding to this question so we've got christian guilt christian fear i think christian guilt is a fair thing i think christian catholic guilt any of that um, is appropriate because we are looking at doing something that we've explicitly been told not to do and is very bad. Um, so I think that's a fair label. And I do have a lot of a lot of uh, points of view, <laughs> a lot of advice, a lot of perspectives, little tidbits that hopefully something in here will help you. I want to start with recognizing, and maybe you can start with recognizing how long you have believed in something that is not spirit-led, right? Something that's not mystical or something that has no interaction with like the supernatural, right? Even when we leave Christianity at a young age, we have still been indoctrinated with information, right? With belief, with scripture, with superstition and even those of us that had no real connection or tie to the actual church system, if you grew up in America or England or lots of places in the world where Christianity is imbued into the culture, there's no real missing this messaging that tells you that this is bad, this is evil, this is scary. and. I don't want to mislead you in the sense that like, just like meeting people is dangerous and you might run into someone who doesn't have your best interests at heart, you can absolutely run into a spirit that you shouldn't be messing with, that shouldn't be messing with you. And we'll talk about that. I'm not going to let you go willy nilly into the world. We'll talk about protection and things like that. But when we think about what we don't like about Christianity, you think about what doesn't settle with us. A lot of times it is, I don't really believe in the devil. You know, I don't really believe that people existing is a sin. I don't believe that having sex is a sin. It's obviously how we're supposed to procreate. How could it be evil? Things like that. We reject these ideas and we misunderstand that it is more than just an idea that's living inside of us and that a belief is a deep-seated, deeply rooted thing. So imagine how many centuries <laughs> of information, of programming that your ancestors and now you have been receiving. How many years they have been working to keep people away from working with spirits, right? It's a long time, longer than any of us have been alive. And we, we are affected by that. So there have been efforts by millions <laughs> of people for thousands of years to make us believe a certain thing about what is right and what is wrong. So we can't expect ourselves to unlearn and disentangle ourselves from those beliefs in 10 years. That's not to say that it can't happen. Absolutely, it can happen. But it's unfair to expect yourself to just kind of <laughs> not be worried about it. <laughs> and on top of like the Christian programming and the very heavy anti-spirit programming we have, it really saturated in our media. Every scary movie that you watch tells you that this is a bad thing, that nothing good comes from it, that if you talk to a spirit, you are actively in danger, which is just not the case. And so my, my first piece of advice that is not like, give yourself some grace and some time. This is going to take time to unlearn. My first piece of advice is to maybe distance yourself a little bit or take a tolerance break, so to speak, from horror movies, from cheap shot films about 
ghosts and spirits that are, and by cheap shot, I mean like they're going at something that is you're easily afraid of. You know, they know they can really get you scared. And I understand the sensation. I, I understand the draw of horror movies It's and what they do for us. I don't think that they're bad. But when we don't have any other experiences to compare against our spirit work spirit experiences, we are just going to result to what we've seen. And we are going to respond with what we've seen, right? So if you encounter a spirit and you have no plan, <laughs> no, um, no system in place of what you're gonna do, right? If you, or when you encounter a spirit, if you're you know, trying to actually go about it, then you're just gonna resort to horror movie logic. You're gonna think <laughs> everything's dangerous, I'm gonna die, there's no value in this, and you're gonna behave in a way that could absolutely offend and or like really hurt an innocent spirit that you called upon, you know what I'm saying? So it just is valuable to try to pump the brakes a little bit on media about spirits that reinforces the idea that they are all out to get you and that they're all connected to the devil. I'm, we're not gonna like split hairs about what my beliefs are, but I, I gotta tell you, some of the big stuff that you're really afraid of doesn't know you exist. They're not gonna hear you even if you did call. Um, <laughs> you could do an upside down pentagram on the ground all you want, but you're not their like high priority. You know what I'm saying? Uh, so it's just not something that I think that you need to worry about up top. <laughs> it's just not something. And when we go back in the history of demons and the history of like, especially demons specifically, we learn that the understanding that we have of these beings is not the same as the understanding that we've had throughout history. It has changed. There was a time when it was just like, oh yeah, this is a spirit or a demon. It's like basically an owl who's tall. And if you call upon him, he'll teach you math. How evil, how scary, you know, oh my God. For me, terrifying. But for most of us, not that, not that evil, not that big a deal, you know? So it's important to kind of go over history of the things that you're actively afraid of and learn about how, what people think, what the history of the being is, how people engage with it, what they've gotten out of those relationships, and how people manage when they don't want to be around those spirits, right? So that's really valuable to just kind of figure out what it is that you believe and why you believe it and how the people that you come from have engaged with this stuff. I think the most important thing for me to cover in this, I don't want it to be super long, but I think the thing that I want to really impress upon you is that it was a concerted effort that the church systems had to make a serious effort and align all of their resources to pull the altar out of the home, to pull the common person away from their gods and their spirits. And not because they wanted to save their souls or save their lives, but because they wanted control over them. And the more that you work with spirits that are for you, the more that you work with and craft relationships with spirits that are for you, that are benevolent for you, that are on your team, right? the more free you become, the more you understand yourself, the more you're forced to know yourself and understand yourself. And when you know yourself, when you have a connection to the land, to the water, to the people around you, to the spirits, you can't be fooled, right? You can't be as easily controlled. So reminding yourself that a lot of what is a knee-jerk reaction with your fear is directly rooted in an oppressive system trying to control you will help you relax. It'll help you exhale. Now, when you're going about ancestor work, when you're going about this like sort of beginning spirit work, especially with ancestors, I want you to know that it's not, especially up front, for the most part, it's not likely to be a very intense, heavy spirit related experience. It is likely to be subtle especially for so many of us that are just getting started um, or like later in, later in life, like you're not five <laughs> or a child or whatever, that you have been dampening that sense your whole life, been trying to not see and not hear, 
right? And that works. That is a, that is a te technique that works. So when you're beginning to go about making a relationship again, you have to try, you have to stretch the muscles and it's not likely to be a super visceral experience off the bat. That and your guides, your spirit guides, they know you, <laughs> they know you. And they would rather you think that they don't exist than have you be actively afraid of them. So I don't think that you have to worry about lighting a candle and then having to deal with a ghost in front of your face. I'm not saying that it can't happen. I'm not saying that it hasn't happened, but I am saying that it's unlikely, especially if you are just not ready for it, especially if this is the beginning of you even trying to like sense into something, right? This is important. So they want this relationship to be, to feel safe, to feel secure so that you commit to it so that you come back to it so that they can actually help you because again the way that the ancestors and your spirit guides can help you and engage in your life really shifts with your consent so like the ability that they have to intervene and they have a certain ability right to engage in your life to help you and then when they have your enthusiastic active and continued consent it's day and night it's day and night, and that's from experience. That It's day and night. Once you say, yes, please, I'm on board, help me out, they can really get things moving, right? So they don't want you to be afraid of them, which means that you should definitely actively share when something is too much. Spirit work is ultimately exercises in boundary work. You are responsible for your boundary, you have to enforce your boundary, uphold your boundary, state it clearly, right? And when you make yourself small or put your comfort to aside or, I mean, you put your comfort aside a little bit, <laughs> you're gonna be uncomfortable at the beginning because you're doing something new. The uncomfortability of expanding your consciousness is a real thing. But they, they don't want you to be, like I said, actively afraid of them. So if they are missing something and you are just like, put that away, put that away, put that away, but not delivering it, they can absolutely hear that and maybe just go off of the energy, the vibes and the voices in your head that they can hear. Or you're gonna need to say, this makes me afraid. I, when I first started, I was very, very afraid of seeing spirits visually, like with my actual eyes, like out in the world. That was whew, too much. And I didn't, I mean, I wasn't experiencing it yet, but I was very afraid of that. And I asked every time I lit my candles, every time I did my prayers, every time I engaged in the work, I said, this is too much for me. I would like to experience you through my mind's eye, through my ears, through my felt senses, but I cannot witness visibly, visually see you. And they, that was not something I had to deal with. They respected the boundary as a good spirit will. And just like when you're talking to a person, you must enforce your boundary. You can't expect them to read your mind, although some can. Um, I'm not trying to scare you. It's not a scary thing. Nobody's judging you. None of your spirit guides are like, wow, this bitch. Like, that's not what's happening. <laughs> Maybe in jest, if that's your guys' relationship, but for the most part, they're not, they don't get like frustrated or, or angry with you or judgmental, right? That is not like necessarily a well spirit. Um, but when you're calling in your well and well-intentioned ancestors, specifically your ancestors and your spirit guides, this is not you're not likely going to run into someone who doesn't have your best interests at heart when you explicitly say, that's who I'm looking to talk to. So moving on from that, there's another big thing that I dealt with. And for me, it was relearning the bodily experience and my bodily response to spirit work, to a spirit speaking to me, to a spirit being close to me. Because as a kid, like you're raised and watching these horror movies and when you're getting the sensation, it's active fear, right? You can't expect your body to just flip a switch as soon as your brain's like, oh, actually I want this. That's not really how it works, right? Like remember when you were a kid and you were looking at roller coasters and you wanted to do it so bad, but then you're in line and it's time to sit down in the roller coaster and you don't wanna do it. 
right? Your body is going to respond with fear to things that you have been afraid of. So when a spirit would come close to me or into my consciousness that I could uh, perceive, I had the same reaction of intense fear when I was of when I was little. You know the feeling at your neck and at your back. And I had to relearn that as my body's cue to a spirit is here, as opposed to my body's cue to you are actively in danger. And that is work. That is not an easy thing to shift. And it's unfair to expect that kind of fast, swift shift over to just being comfortable with something. Ultimately, in witchcraft, in spirituality, in human life, you absolutely deserve to, for the most part, be, you know, I was gonna be comfortable, but I think I'm lying, I think that's a lie. Because ultimately we are always uncomfortable with the things that are at our growth edge. We're always uncomfortable with what we're meant to do. <laughs> at least from my experience, you're always uncomfortable, there's always fear. But ultimately we have to engage with this fear and see what it is that it's rooted to because so many times it is not rooted in the actual experience that you're having or trying to have and more rooted in other old fears, rooted in other, if this happens, something else might happen fears that are sort of a complicated, tangly little web in your brain. <laughs> and you, we are doing the work of rewiring ourselves. So rewiring your brain unlearning things, shifting sensations in your body, those are big, right? Those are big things. And you just can't expect yourself to be there immediately. Even the like hereditary people who like are born with a gift and are seeing spirits immediately, some of them have a beautiful story where it just wasn't an issue, right? And it was like, we're cool. And so many of them say, it took me 15 years to be okay with this. It took me 10 years to be okay with this. Um, I'm still not okay with it, you know? <laughs> I'm working and this is my work and I love it. And I'm also still uncomfortable, you know? A lot of different perspectives, a lot of different experiences, but all have that same fear obstacle to overcome. But it is really worth it to engage with your fear because this, this, being, or this energy, your fear is not a being, your, this energy inside of you, your fear is in your way everywhere, right? It's your ally, it's trying to keep you alive, but it's had way too much say your entire life, right? So you'll be looking at what is for you everywhere in every aspect of your life. And every time that you give in to the fear and, and reject something that you're really called to, it doesn't feel good, right? It never gets satisfied. It doesn't really settle and, and it doesn't feel good. So when you are going about this journey to engage with your ancestors, engage with spirit guides, you get to learn tools to engage with that fear that you can then take to the other parts of your life, right? Like you should be, you should feel, not should, but you deserve to feel confident and comfortable speaking to people if that's something that you want, right? You deserve to feel confident and comfortable asking for a raise if that's something you want. You deserve to feel comfortable and confident going on a solo trip if that's what you want, right? It's like that fear that is directly in between you and what you are literally being drawn to that you desire so deeply that feels so aligned and purposeful, it's never without fear. So it's valuable to learn the techniques, to learn the skills, to get close, comfortable, and cognizant of how your fear manifests itself in your life so that you can engage with it, so that you can manage it, so that you can become allies on the same page and that they don't have full say, full control over your life. They aren't supposed to, right? Your fear is not supposed to be your main guiding uh, system here, your main guiding force. <laughs> and that's why I think that it's worth it. Now. I know that it may not feel like this was like a bunch of concrete tips, but I just wanted you to hear what I have to say because it is worth it. If, if only to feel comforted when you are sad, if only to feel like you know where you come from, if only to feel like there is someone on your side in the invisible world or even in the physical world, I think that this worth it, work is worth it. So try to stay away from the horror movies, try to research 
and read what people say, read what various different mediums and psychics across practices say about their experiences. Find where we have something that is very common that everybody says this is how they encounter it, right? Learn the techniques. Find what makes you feel protected, a tool, a prayer, a, a, a incense, a spell, an incantation, a different spirit, whatever actually feels protective for you to utilize while you're doing this. And again, a spirit, you are a human body. You are a human in a body. Spirits need energy to move things in the physical world, to do physical things, right? It's not necessarily just like a a death right, I was gonna say birthright, a death right to every spirit, now you're dead, you can do poltergeist stuff. It doesn't work that way. And you are a spirit inside of a body, which is like a battery, which is filled with kinetic energy, with magnetic energy, right? We have access to energy at our fingertips all the time. So your will, your magic, your boundaries, they're powerful. They have an effect on the world around you. Not to say that you're more powerful than like anything you'll ever encounter, that's not the case. But that for the most part, small spirit nuances or, or nuisances, things that are overblown in the movies as the scariest thing possible, can be dealt with with saying get out of here can be dealt with by ringing a bell in your house, can be dealt with by opening the windows and banging pots and pans, can be dealt with with just you being so sure and confident about your will and your command that they it must be listened to, right? And beyond that, you can just get help. There's always help. There are always people that are more uh, knowledgeable than you, that are more experienced in, than you, that are able to come and like do an exorcism or whatever, or to do a banishing ritual. There are many people that can help you with that. And I, I feel so confident, like beyond confident, to say that it's not likely that you are gonna encounter anything you can't deal with. And if you were going to, if that was the case, you'd likely already be feeling it before you set up an altar for your ancestors. And setting up an altar for your ancestors will help you deal with it because they protect you. They protect you. Your well and well-intentioned ancestors absolutely are your first line of defense. And keeping them fed, keeping them, keeping your relationship, keeping your consent on board for them to help you will just help you be more protected. So it's like calling on your, like, a, like your uh, slew of big brothers to come help you when there's a bully at school. They may not beat them up, but they're definitely gonna make sure you get to the school safely, right? Now, some people's ancestors may very well beat them up and that's none of my business. You know what I'm saying? That's why you don't mess with people when you don't know what their spiritual practice is. But you deserve to have that comfort and they can deliver that. So remember, remind yourself when you're setting things up, when you are engaging in it, when you start to feel like something is happening, that your fear is manufactured, that your fear is a plan by these oppressive forces, oppressive forces, right? It was a centuries long plan to make sure that you had no connection with these beings, that they were the only people when we talk to spirits, it's divine. And when you do it, it's evil. Doesn't sound right, does it? And remind yourself, it was not one day that you learned to fear the spirits. And it will be more than one day <laughs> that you learn to feel comfortable with them. Just like any new journey, it takes baby steps, pushing yourself to your edge and seeing what you can engage with but while also making sure that you are honoring your own boundaries and only doing it at your own pace. There is literally no rush. There's no rush. There is no rush in the world. You have all the time in the world to make these connections, especially since these spirits don't even experience time that way. No drama. So thank you so much for your question. I am talking to all of you. I'm not just talking to you, but thank you for your question. <laughs> I hope that this was helpful and I will continue to make videos on this topic because I think that it's really important. And if you have a question that you'd like me to answer, if you have follow-up questions, if anyone has something that is sitting heavy on their heart that they want to hear me speak about, please give me your comment down below and I'll see what I can do. Either I'll reply in the comments or if I feel like it needs to be a whole thing, I'll make it a whole thing. No stress, okay? Take care of yourselves. Love you so much. 
quick reminder that I am offering Queer Ancestor Connections right now. It's a psychic reading, it's a channeling session where I'll channel through a previously unknown ancestor that self-identifies under the queer umbrella. It's not just for queer people, it is for everyone. And they are asking to be reconnected with their descendants so that they can get back on the altar, so that they can really help us with queer and trans liberation, so that they can really give the lessons that they didn't get, get to pass down, that they can finally pass them down. So if that's you, you're interested in that, you want to be connected, you want to know, you know the name, how to engage, how to foster a relationship with one or more, I don't know, no rules, uh, it's usually just one, but you never know, one or more of your queer ancestors, your well and well-intentioned spiritual beings that are wanting to be on your team, that are ready, that are well and well-intentioned and can really help you, then uh, one of the options would be to book a queer ancestor connection, all right? And we have conversations like this in my Discord all the time. If you're interested, you can join the Patreon, uh, get the link to the Discord, and hang out with the Rainbow Witches. Um, and thanks. All right, everyone. Thank you so much. If you found this helpful, give me a like, subscribe to the channel to make sure that you don't miss it and take care of yourselves. Jupiter is in Taurus. There's actually a ton of astrology this week, so if you need to lay low, lay low, no stress. There's a new moon at the end of the week initiating you into something incredible, the new part of your journey. Remember that uncomfortability and fear come up with every single one of those. So don't be tempted to believe that it's just doom moving forward because baby, it's not, all right? Thank you so much. Take care.